Well, if you've ever wondered what happens when Wendy Richard gets hiccups, then ponder no longer. It's all going a bit pear-shaped in just a minute, now on BBC One. My name is Nicholas Parsons, and once again, it is my pleasure to welcome you to Just a Minute, the exciting, outrageous, and sometimes impossible game in which I ask my four guests to speak on a subject that I give them without hesitation, repetition, or deviating from that subject. And let us now, right away, meet the four guests who are going to play the game today. And we welcome first the multi-talented Tony Hawks. Beside him, that most talented comedy writer, Barry Cryer. <laughs> and on my left, the ever-popular Wendy Richard. And beside her, the delightful stand-up comedian, Stephen Frost. Please welcome all four of them. <laughs> well, they're going to pit their wits and their verbal dexterity against each other and try and score points. And today, we're going to begin the show with Tony Hawks. And the subject is Garden Gnomes. <laughs> Oh, that all. That's got a little ripple from the audience. <laughs> they would like to hear about garden gnomes. Tell us something about them in this game, Tony, starting now. In these days of cool Britannia, it's most important for you to have the right image, and I can't think a better way of doing this than having a garden gnome in your front garden. Personally, I have over 150, and I know them all by name, and I have a little chat with them in the morning, if you want to. Uh, Barry Crow, you've challenged. Name them. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Barry Crow, that wasn't a challenge within the rules of just a minute. But as we enjoyed the comment, we give you a bonus point for that. But as Tony Hawks was interrupted, uh, he keeps the subject and he gets a point for being challenged. And he continues with 45 seconds available still on Garden Gnomes starting now. I was always very amused by how mortified David Bowie was by the fact that one of his hits was called The Laughing Gnome. And during the 70s and 80s, he was trying so hard to be trendy and popular. And uh, hesitation. Wendy. Hesitation. Yes, we interpret that as hesitation. <coughs> Wendy, you have a correct challenge, so you get a point for that. You take over the subject, and there are 32 seconds available. Garden gnomes starting now. I only have one garden gnome at the rear of the house. Then there are garden frogs, and there's stone dogs. Uh, Stephen Frost, your challenge. There was hesitation. There was hesitation. I was getting the mental yeah. Yeah, I know. They can repeat the subject on the card, either collectively or independently. There's more than one word. And uh, Stephen, but it was a hesitation, so you have a challenge, which is correct. You get a point for that. And you have uh, 23 seconds available. Garden gnomes starting now. You can get ones that look like they're fishing, playing tennis, snooker, and even badminton nowadays. These are what we call modern garden gnomes. Back when they were first invented, by a Norwegian, I might add, they all... Then they your challenge. Well, apart from that, well, he really hesitated, but he was talking twaddle. <laughs> well, he realised he was talking twaddle, and that's why he paused. Yeah. Wendy, you had a correct challenge. <laughs> Wendy gets a point for that, and she takes over the subject. Eight seconds are available. Garden gnomes are starting now. I also have a garden gnome on one of the shelves in my bathroom. A fan sent it to me from Canada when he heard me... Um, Tony, your challenge. That's a bathroom gnome. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, yeah. it wasn't. The shelves are bathroom shelves. This is a garden Wendy, gnome. Wendy, don't worry. I disagree with the challenge. I, li I like the idea of the challenge. I'm going to give you a bonus point Thank for you, that. Nicholas. So, Wendy, uh, garden gnomes... Is, and you have got the subject still, and only two seconds to go, starting now. A fan sent me from Canada after I've discussed this subject from Wendy. When that whistle is blown, it tells us that 60 seconds are up, and whoever is speaking at that moment gains an extra point. It was, of course, Wendy Richards, so she's taken a strong lead at the end of the round. And who takes the next round? Barry Crow. Let's hear from you. Slang. Tell us something about the subject of slang in this game starting now. Slang is an argo, a patois, a vernacular. Rhyming slang is a very common idiom. I once heard a man describe 
described as an all quiet on the western. I will not go into this any deeper, but the essence of the euphony of this sort of language. Years ago, some fellow said to me, I came here on this sucker. What do you mean, I cried. The tube, he said. Sucker zoob. I've repeated sucker. <laughs> Sometimes if you keep going, Barry, they don't notice it or they enjoy what you're doing yes. and they let you go with kindness. But they wouldn't give a sucker an even break. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Tony Hawk's challenge first, so yes, it was a repetition. repetition and uh, so you have the subject of slang, <laughs> Tony. 31 seconds available, starting now. Yes, as Barry said, you do sometimes get in a London taxi and that driver will go on and in other ways. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's a tough game, yes. Uh, <laughs> Stephen, though, you got yeah. in first, yeah. yes. Slang is with you, 24 seconds starting now. Well, as we all know, slang is Norwegian for bell. <laughs> when you are on a... Yes. Slang is... Uh, <laughs> slang is not Norwegian for bell. I quite agree. I challenge Stephen Frost. Mm. Absolutely, and prove I agree it. with that. Deviation, he can't prove it. And it's with you, Barry Cryer. 20, 19 seconds available starting now. The same gentleman I alluded to earlier... Uh, when? No, Stephen. Gentleman, that's the second gentleman he said gentleman Yes, you talked about gentleman. Did I say gentleman yeah, before? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Stephen, you've got the subject back. Another point to you. And uh, 15 and a half seconds slang starting now. My favourite slang word is, and I'm going to tell it you right now, because <laughs> I loved it ever since I could use the English language to express myself. Here it is, the one that makes me laugh and will probably tickle your ribs as well, is of course that old favourite that everybody... <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Cross kept going to the whistle when gained the extra point for doing so, and he never actually gave us any slang, and nobody <laughs> challenged him. Wendy Richards, they've got a subject here. They want you to talk about smelly cheeses. 60 seconds starting now. I love cheese, and I'm fortunate enough to have low cholesterol, which means I can eat as many smelly cheeses as I like. In fact, I enjoy best goat's cheese, which is a smelly cheese. Then there's other Italian. <laughs> Barry, hesitation. I'm afraid yeah. so. Cheesy she started hesitation. thinking, yes. Cheese has got up her nostrils and she absolutely faded away. Right, there are 47 seconds available for you to tell us something about smelly cheeses starting now. Gorgonzola, brother of Emil, the renowned novelist, <laughs> is my favourite and I've hesitated already. <laughs> I'm going to take it. I'll I take think you back. actually waited for a laugh, which didn't no, really no, understand no. what it is. I was peaking too early. <laughs> Sorry, Beijing too early. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen, it was a correct challenge. Another point to you and 39 seconds. Smelly cheese is starting now. As we all know, smelly cheeses is slang for I've got the sneezes, the one I was trying to talk about before I ran out of time. My favourite smelly cheese is camembert, which of course comes from France. <laughs> Ready of hesitating. Yes, I think when you draw a word out as long as that, I think that is hesitation. Well, no one's ever elongated a word as long as that in the whole history of just a minute, as Stephen did oh. just then. And he deserves to lose it, I'm sorry. Wendy, I agree with your challenge. You have smelly cheeses back. 26 <coughs> seconds starting now. Smelly cheeses are usually of the soft variety. There are hard smelly cheeses, mm. but soft smelly cheese. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I think there was a repetition of soft. Yes, there was. <laughs> Amongst other things. <laughs> Amongst other things, yes. Soft, smelly cheeses. Yes. Wendy's gone. Isn't it lovely to see Wendy go like that? <laughs> Tony! Oh, I hit myself. <laughs> <laughs> you you show away. taste. Yes, I know, right. Tony, you had a correct challenge, so you take over the subject of smelly cheeses and there are 18 seconds available starting now. I have had several pairs of socks which I have cultivated into the smell of various cheeses. Gorgonzola, oh, it's just one, there are many others. Oh, it's Barry. I don't want to hear any more of this. <laughs> I don't think the viewers do either, so no. what is your challenge? I mean, within I, the rules I, of just a deviation minute. Deviation from taste. Don't want to hear about his socks. Actually, that's quite a good challenge, isn't it, really? Because it wasn't a great well, taste, was it? It's your verdict, Nicholas. I know it it's is. It's your career. <laughs> <laughs> Bad taste, deviation, smelly cheeses, eight seconds starting now. I was in a hotel some years ago in this very city of Birmingham and I detected an odour emanating under my door jam. What is that, I cried, and banged them. <laughs> Very 
Clara was speaking as a whistle and gained that extra point. And it's a very interesting situation. They're all almost equal. They've all got five points apiece, except for Tony, who's only got four. But uh, <laughs> it's only one difference. And the, what, what, are the, what difference do the points make? It, it, it's, it's the talent that's displayed, which I love. Right. right. <laughs> the next subject is chat shows. It's Stephen Frost's turn to begin. Stephen, tell us something about chat shows starting now. I have never been on a chat show in my life. Not been invited, not been interested enough. <laughs> and when this challenge? Not been. Not been, not been. Such a sad life you've had, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> not been. And Wendy got in only five seconds. But she's got 55 to continue. Chat shows, another point, of course. Carry on, Wendy, now. There are very few good chat show hosts. I myself was actually the first ever guest on Wogan's chat show. I have also been on other people's chat shows, but as I said, they are not always as good as some of the others. <laughs> I think Michael Parkinson is one of the best. Uh, Steve, I can't you believe you're invited on if you talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> So, Stephen, within the rules of just a minute, what's your challenge? Uh, 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 repetition. Of what? I can hear her breathing. <laughs> <laughs> At least I haven't talked as much twaddle as what he has on this programme. <coughs> Wendy, I disagree with the challenge. You keep the subject, another point to you. Chat shows are still with you. It's 35 seconds starting now. I actually would like to have a chat show of my own one day because I'm a very good listener and I think I would be the ideal chat show host. I would... Um, whose challenge? Repetition what? of host, yes, I think, had from earlier. Hosts before. Oh, have I? You've got yes, him with the correct challenge. You've got chat shows. 30 seconds starting now. Chat show is the only known expression that rhymes with macho. And there is a long lineage of these talk programmes. I remember a story of Peter Sellers in America many years ago. Uh, conversing... <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember it well enough. Yeah. Well, you probably remembered it, but you couldn't get it out fluently within the rules of just a minute. Indeed. So Tony got in first with the challenge. I have hesitation. Chat shows with you, Tony. 19 seconds starting now. I think it's appalling that people only go on chat shows when they've got something to sell going on saying something like, I wrote a book round island with a and, fridge. Uh, Barry Trump. Repetition of something. Right. There are 13 seconds available. Chat shows, Barry, starting now. Peter Sellers some years ago. Yes, that's a challenge. Right over. Repetition Peter of Peter Sellers. Sellers. Yes. Oh! <laughs> yes, if you said it before, you can't repeat it even when you get the subject back. Stephen, another point to you and the subject and 11 seconds chat show starting. I out. think the best chat show host would, of course, be Mr. Nicholas Parsons himself. That's the... Uh, well, someone disagrees. <laughs> I've got to challenge him for being totally and utterly ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, how can you say something like that? Sorry, Wendy. Why? You don't think I'd be a good chat show host? Well, that is a total utter... It's, it's worse than... What, what did we do on this show? Was it der derivation? Derivation, it yeah, yeah, yeah. That. Demolition. Yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Worse than that. So, what is your challenge? <laughs> He's talking rubbish again. Well, then I wouldn't be a good chat show host. Look, let's not get personal about this. <laughs> I'm just saying that he... All right, let it go. <laughs> still think he was talking well, rubbish. Well, you challenged, my love. You've got yes, to because me... I think he's talking rubbish. Right, all right, Wendy. Um, I'm going to disagree, actually. I'm going to leave it with Stephen and say that you have five seconds on chat show, Stephen, starting now. I would love to be the first guest on this particular piece of television with my friend here presenting it, because we would talk... <laughs> yeah. Stephen Cross speaking as the whistle went, gained an extra point. And they're all very close. Only one point separates all of them in different orders of upward Tony Hawk's... <laughs> <laughs> Barry Cryer, <laughs> equal Wendy Richard, and Steve. <laughs> <I know. laughs> right. Tony Hawks. Oh, oh well, well uh, oh, Stephen's just in the lead. He's one point ahead of the others. Right. <laughs> I, I take back what I said about you making a good chat show. <laughs> <laughs> You just failed the audition, Nicholas. No, I, but our chat show is a different discipline. This yes, is a game right, show, which right. I generate humour and comedy. Mm. That's my job. <laughs> yeah. You're doing a very good job. Now generate the next round. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's a good subject for you, Tony Hawks, because it's your turn to begin. Lou. Lou, as well as being a place I believe in the West Country, is also slang for toilet, and the Americans call it John. And if you go over there, in a very trendy place, they'll have Olivia Newton for the ladies and Elton for the gents, which I think is hilarious and rather sweet, and I saw it there. I've never been to the place... Uh, repetition of there. There. Oh, that's a tough challenge, isn't that it? Was, yes. It's cruel, wasn't it? Yeah. No, it wasn't cruel, but it's within the rules of just a minute. So we give it to you. You have a correct challenge. You have 44 <laughs> seconds on Lou starting now. Lou in Cornwall was the very place in which my wife and I spent our honeymoon 37 years ago. 
Uh, you've been challenged by Tony. I refuse to believe it could be that long, Barry. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> Look at you, you young, fresh-faced little pup that you are. And your eyesight's going. <laughs> <laughs> I know, well, that's and I'm I afraid I can't give you any points for sink of fancy. Sink of sink, sink sink <laughs> For sycophancy and sycophancy, yes. Well, well there He's we are. Sick in his panties. What's going on here? <laughs> sycophancy, oh, making a fuss of his friend. That's right. <coughs> so, incorrect challenge, Barry. You've still got the subject. Lou is with you, and there are 38 seconds starting now. I remember we went to see Sick the Bismarck, or was it Sink the Bismarck, when we were in the. <laughs> yeah. Bismarck. What do you mean, oh? Bismarck. Bismarck. The sake of a cheap shot Ch at Nicholas. Yeah, yeah. I know. It didn't know. quite come off, did it? See, there is justice. Is there? Yes. Sick of fancy. Right. Uh, there are um, uh, 33 seconds available for Lou with you, Stephen, starting now. As a child, I holidayed in Lou in Cornwall. We played on the beach, went sailing at night, and also went to the fish and chip shops. We'd sell the best poisson. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, yeah. I think there was going to be a slight hesitation yeah, there. Right. He goes why into the why didn't you go sailing at night? <coughs> yeah, I wondered that. Well, I thought go night fishing. Yeah, I just wondered no, no, why no, as a you child can't they put him on a boat I would have had him for deviation. Yeah. Yeah. You could have had him for deviation because yeah, okay. you can't sail at night. Catching yeah. starfish. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what a sad man I am. <laughs> It got the groan it deserved. It was <laughs> fun. Right, uh, uh, Wendy, you have the subject of Lou. You have uh, 24 seconds starting now. Well, Lou is a slang word for toilet. And what really annoys me that when one goes to the theatre, there are never enough ladies loos. It's all right for the gents because they just stand up against a wall. <laughs> but ladies have all this... Uh, oh, two ladies. Uh, yes. Well, I don't. I go to the toilet. <laughs> I don't just stand up against the wall in the theatre. It wouldn't go down very well, would it? No. <laughs> but it would go down. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yes, you know, I think, I think the, the repetition of ladies of the gents standing up against a wall. <laughs> I think we better get back to just a minute before this goes any further down that particular path. Tony Hawks, a correct challenge. Lou is with you. Ten seconds available, starting now. Lou was a beautiful girl. I used to take her red roses, walk in the country with her, and what a romantic time we had. Actually, in that place, Lou, in the West Country, which I said earlier, but no one. And uh, repetition of country. West Country, yes, right, Barry. You got in with half a second to go. <laughs> yeah, well, it's shrewd, isn't it? Yeah. And you have uh, the subject of Lou starting now. Lou is the headquarters of the... <laughs> so Barry Clark not only get the, got that point for speaking as a whistle went, but many other points in the round, and he has moved forward, and he's now in the lead just ahead of uh, Stephen Frost, Wendy, Richard, and Tony Hawks in that order. All right, Barry, go yes. for your points. You're in the lead, and it's your turn to begin. And the subject, oh, a lovely one, the dentist's chair. <laughs> the very apprehensive, terrified patient lolled back in the dentist's chair, suddenly leaned forward and grabbed a very vulnerable part of the <laughs> aforementioned medical practitioner's anatomy. We're not going to hurt each other, are we? He said. <laughs> Which I always thought was the perfect ploy. Only last year I suffered from a large abscess, which I can assure you does not make the heart grow fonder, and visited the aforementioned poet of the dental art to see if he could alleviate my pain. And I wish I was in that chair now, because I would be feeling less of the aforementioned agony. <laughs> Oh, yes. So you challenged, Tony. Well, I think there were three aforementioned. There was, yes. Yeah. The aforementioned, Sorry. yes. Right. Repetition of thought as well as the words. No, you did well. We were in the dentist's chair I there. I wanted anaesthetic for that bit. <laughs> Tony, you have a correct challenge. You have 24 seconds. You tell us something about the dentist's chair, starting now. What I've never understood about dentists is why they talk to you when they've got your mouth wedged wide open. <laughs> they say, where did you go on holiday this year? And you go, ah, ah, ah. Or they say, oh, Lou, very nice. Uh, they say twice. They say yes. You could have had him for ah 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 too, couldn't you? Repetition of ha. Ah, yeah, yes. absolutely. But uh, but Wendy, it was correct. You have 13 seconds. You tell us something about the dentist chair starting now. I'm absolutely <coughs> terrified of dentist chairs. I'll be quite honest. I have a broad yellow stripe down my back. But as I don't want to. Um, she hasn't. <laughs> She was talking metaphorically, Stephen. Oh, no, that's all. Is that so, a Greek language? No, no, no. it's no. Norwegian. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't 
told to, but I didn't think... So, Wendy, you have another point. You keep the subject. Five seconds, the dentist chair starting now. And although I don't care for visiting the dentist chair, I know I must go because I don't want my teeth to fall out. <laughs> so, Wendy Richards, being as a whistle went gained that extra point, and she has leapt forward with other points in that round, and she's now equal with Barry Cryer in the lead, just ahead of Stephen Frost and Tony Hawkes in that order. And, Wendy, it's your turn to begin. Here's a good subject. Hiccups. Tell us something about them in this game, starting now. Hiccups can be most uncomfortable. Unfortunately, I at times suffer from hiccups. But my Cairn Terrier, Shirley Brahms, oh. when she was a puppy, she used to get hiccups. Oh, um, um, yes. Two she's. Two she's, yes. She's. Plus, I'm sick and tired of listening about that dog. <laughs> People love it. Oh, right. You're obviously not an animal lover, are no, you? No, no. Well, lots of other people I'm a lover are, like an it? animal. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, do, we... Do dogs have hiccups? Yes. Do well, they? Of course. Yeah. Oh. Hiccups is with you, Stephen, and there are 50 seconds available starting now. The best way to cure hiccups, of course, is to drink a glass of water upside down, which is very difficult to do because you spill it all... And... It's deviation from accuracy. You don't... You can't drink it when it's upside down. All the water would fall out. Exactly. And then you drink it from the <laughs> other side, like that. Yeah, but then all the water will fall out. <laughs> no, you've still got the water. No, no, you've got all the water. Look, 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 look. Yeah, but I mean... Look, you don't know Well, you... You tell me how you can up. drink from a glass like that. Oh, I think hey, we've had enough on this. <laughs> right. You were... He was deviating in the sense that you can't drink from a glass upside down. That is devious. So, you have a correct challenge, Barry. And you take over the subject of hiccups, and there are 43 seconds available starting now. Other cures are a key down your back, a sudden shock or alarm, a friend shouting, FIRE! That will always <laughs> cure hiccups. I have tested this to um, my Stephen, own satisfaction. Stephen, He's just bitter. <laughs> He's just bitter. <laughs> I'm just amazed how close you came, Nepper. Uh, <laughs> cure. There were two cures there. He said, well, yeah, and another right. cure. cure so Stephen, I'd like yeah. to pass on the information. Yeah, yeah, I right. don't care. Yeah. It's the game that matters, <laughs> not the points. <laughs> 32 seconds for you, Stephen. Hiccup starting now. There was a man who had the hiccups for 72 years, and he died in this... <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, yes. We Hesitation, yes. Hesitation there. 27 seconds for you on hiccups starting now. I up uh, yes. Oh, <laughs> hesitation. I'm afraid there was, Wendy. Yeah, thank you. Oh. Two full seconds Harsh. before yeah. any sound Harsh. emanated from your delightful lips. So, um, Stephen, correct challenge. 25 seconds with you, starting now. Uh, is 1-1. One, one. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy? Oh, I couldn't spot it then. Well, there was something there, wasn't there? <laughs> That was a definite hesitation. You deserve it after that demonstration. Yeah, and, a yeah, and, and a repetition. And a repetition, yes. Everything. Two for the price of one. Yeah, but it's repetition of words uh, yeah. and not to ideas. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Wendy, correct challenge. And there are 22 seconds available. Still on hiccup starting now. Unfortunately, when I start hiccuping, I find it very difficult to stop. And even a cold key down my back or someone shouting boo would have <laughs> Merce. Who knew, yes. Merce. Well, she's made herself laugh so much she can't carry on. I know. It's, it's, I, I think the thought of someone saying boo was what did it to you. <laughs> boo! Look. She's gone. Give the hiccups now. She's gone. Yeah. It's that sort of show. Yes. Tony, a correct challenge. Hiccups with you, 11 seconds available, starting now. I was once going to take Wendy Richards' delightful dog for a walk, but I couldn't because it had such bad hiccups it didn't want to go. I was mortified. I'd so looked forward to taking this little canine creature out, and I was... Oh, uh, Barry. Repetition Rabbit. of taking. Yeah. Correct challenge. Barry, this is the second time you've done it in this show. You've got in with half a second <laughs> to go. And it's hiccups starting now. A much vaunted remedy. So oh, Barry's playing the game with great aplomb. He's getting many points, including that last one to speak the whistle went. And he has moved forward. You know, he, well, he's both moved forward, and so has Wendy. She's got a lot of points on hiccups. In fact, they've all got quite a lot of points. But it is uh, Barry Crow, Wendy Richard, uh, Stephen Frost, and Tony Hawkes in that order, for those who are interested, and I know some are deeply involved. Right, let us carry on with the show. <laughs> Stephen Frost, oh, making me laugh, this subject. Lumpy custard. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me.
tell us something about lumpy custard in just a minute, starting now. Do you know, I prefer lumpy custard to the smooth kind. You can get your teeth into it and suck it through, mm. down your gums, into your throat. Mm. And it makes me feel so good that I have second helpings of lumpy custard. When I was... I Who's think there's channel? a hesitation there. No, I don't think there was any hesitation. I thought it was disgusting, but there was no hesitation. <laughs> and the audience, I mean, do, have you ever heard an audience go, ugh, as <laughs> you're performing? No, I don't think so. so unfortunately, we're going to hear more about Lumpy Custard from you, Stephen. Right. Another point, Lumpy well. Custard, and there are 47 seconds available starting now. Not only do I not mind it lumpy, I prefer it cold as well. Ooh. This way, it keeps me young, beautiful and healthy, and the person I am today. If it were not for lumpy custard smeared all over my body every morning, my skin would be as rough as rats. But as you can tease... <laughs> as you can what? As you can tease. Oh, yeah. well may you dry on that. Wendy, you got in first. There's hesitation, and there are 29 seconds. And this is going to be the last round. It's very close, so let's, for those who are interested in points, go keenly forward. 29 seconds, lumpy custard with you, Wendy, starting now. I think lumpy custard is one of the most revolting things that could ever be served up to you when you're standing either in the school canteen or at the works eating place and you see them pick up this big jug and all this lumpy custard just goes, look, look. <laughs> Tony, you got in on the blops first. Uh, yeah, yes. repetition of blub. Yes. <laughs> I've always wanted to say that. Where have you? You've said uh, it now. Does it make you feel better? Repetition of blub, yes. Right, right. 14 seconds. Do tell us something about lumpy custard starting now. Like Stephen, as a small child, I did enjoy lumpy custard. Something strange about it, but its texture pleased me in some way. And Mrs. Fincham, the mother of one of my friends at school, was particularly good at making this kind of custard, and I'd rush round to his house at 4.35 after school. <laughs> Hawks' lumpy custard brings that round to a finish, giving him an extra point, and also brings the show to an end. And what a fitting end, because they've all contributed so much, and they're almost equal. But in second place, Stephen Frost and Tony Hawks were only two points behind joint winners, which were Barry Cryer and Wendy Richard, together, equal. Congratulations to them. It only remains to say that thank you to our four intrepid players of the game. That is Tony Hawks, Barry Cryer, Wendy Richards, Stephen Frost. From them and from me, Nicholas Parsons. Hope you've enjoyed the show and will tune in again when we start to play just a minute from then. From all of us, goodbye. <laughs>